Have you tried the magic archer in Dragon's Dogma 2 yet? I ask this because holy moly was I surprised by how insane this class actually is once you level it up. You see, I always loved the magic archer in Dragon's Dogma 1. The stat growth was terrible though, so you did have to play a lot of sorcerer if you wanted to get good stats, but man, was it worth it. It was my go-to for every playthrough of Dragon's Dogma 1, but with Dragon's Dogma 2 removing their daggers, I felt kind of bummed out with half of my favorite class being sort of removed. But man, was I wrong. We actually tried this class in a preview and it just felt alright and not as strong as the other vocations we tried. But again, I was wrong. Either that preview was completely balanced differently or it's been buffed since because this class is definitely one of the strongest and in a way easiest vocations to play as it just wrecks everything. Do share what vocation you're enjoying at the moment, and if you've actually tried the Magic Archer, do you have any amazing combos that you've figured out? If you didn't know, the Magic Archer is all about using a unique magic bow to conjure different elemental lock-on projectile arrow spells. The thing is, the Magic Archer has a variety of abilities for pretty much every situation, from offensive to healing and utility. But some of these skills are just straight up busted for how amazing they are and how much damage they deal. The Ricochet Hunter skill is something that any veteran of the Magic Archer from the first game will know, as this was OP in tight spaces like caves or dungeons, which made it perfect for the bitter Black Isles in Dragon's Dogma 1. Well, once again here, it fires a ton of electric arrows that bounce around continuously hitting enemies, and it doesn't disappoint in Dragon's Dogma 2. If you're ever in a cave or enclosed area, this move is just insane. It can pretty much clear out a whole cave just by shooting it inside before you enter. And then later on, you get the Sagittate Avalanche skill, which looks amazing and you may have seen it in the trailers. But that really doesn't do it justice. This move is so satisfying as you literally lock on a million times onto the enemy and then fire whole health bars off of them with this move. Because this hits so many times, just imagine combining this with the Sorcerer's Flare skill for an insane combo. And this isn't even mentioning the other the utility and healing skills that this class has, you can literally revive your pawns from a distance with the recovery arrow skill, which can be used for all kinds of crazy things like yeeting your pawn off of a cliff and then reviving them to have them catch you when you jump down. The Arctic Bolt skill is also a really fun one, as you charge it up to fire a literal boulder of ice at enemies. It looks super dumb, but is actually really fun to use, and is a physical damaging attack, which makes up for the class's largely magical focused moves. And then there's other things like the Candescent Orb, which is a great one for lighting up an area at night, or the Blaze Fang Arrow to control a literal fireball as you home it in on enemies. Of course, any fire move is going to be great against a lot of enemies in this game that are weak to fire, like the Griffins, they just get destroyed by this move. And there are even more skills than this, and many of them feel very viable. However, we cannot skip over the Meister's Teaching Ultimate skill, the Martyr's Bolt. This is perhaps the most OP skill in the game, but it does feel somewhat balanced due to its requirement. To use this move, you need to basically reduce your maximum HP, so it doesn't go grey, it literally just removes it from your health bar. The more that you drain, the more damage this skill gains, so if you want to do it at its full potential, you need to do it once per rest. But what this essentially means is that you can use all of your max HP to near one shot a monster, and because campsites are quite common around the map, you can easily just replenish this in between large monster fights. If you try this fully charged up, trust me, you will not be disappointed as you see those health bars get chonked down off of a monster. But what makes this skill so good is that when you get later in the game and you start farming particular monsters, even things like drakes that are scattered around the map, you can basically just one shot them with this and then instantly rest before moving moving on to the next one to farm. So you can go from location to location, one-shotting things, resting afterwards and moving on to the next one, which is just a really fast and effective way to farm. On top of this, if you actually get the endgame dragon weapon from the Dragonforged NPC, the Magic Archers one comes with a special effect that makes it extra effective against Draconic species, again making it very good for endgame farming. So all of this sounds really powerful, but that isn't actually going over the fun factor of the class. It is a ranged class, of course we don't have the daggers anymore, but what this actually means is that you get to stand back in battle and see everything that goes on with a better, more sort of cinematic angle, and you can even watch your pawns do their stupid or cool things as you just lock on with all of your moves and watch them home in on the enemy. It's quite easy to get to grips with, but also very fun to pull off. Essentially, what I wanted to highlight here is how fun, but also busted this class is for farming. Even when you compare it to the other strong classes like the Thief 
with its Beyblade Spin Attack, or the Mystic Spear Hand, which literally is invulnerable with that shield, the Magic Archer still stands out, both for its playstyle, its damage, and its fun factor. So have you tried the Magic Archer, and what did you think of it? Did you get it to maximum level to try out all these moves? Why or why not? Tell us down below. And subscribe for more Dragon's Dogma 2 coming your way very soon.